Welcome back to the different forehand. Carlos Alcaraz faces a huge... No, we've got to talk football. Arsenal head away to Molyneux this Saturday in what is an absolute must-win game to ensure it's not another April crash. But before we look ahead, and we must, let's go back. Last Friday, I hold to go back to such innocent times. Jordan Campbell put together a brilliant piece about Arsenal for The Athletic. He spoke to coaches, analysts and players at top Premier League clubs about what has made Arsenal so hard to play against this season. And it's a really good read. The pros spoke about Erdegaard's role, Saka and Ben White's connection, Rice's dual responsibilities, all the good stuff that's made us tick. And they even discussed Saka's potential role inside in the future, something I strongly believe in, I've spoken about before. But the one thing that stood out to me was, yeah, the professionals picked out all the clever things that we do, all our tactics, but everyone spoke about how hard we work. Everyone mentioned it. Yes, the ideas are there. Yes, there's the quality, but it's also how many men we commit forward, how many men we get back behind the ball when we defend, how quickly we move the ball, how much we rotate in and out of zones to create unpredictability. In essence, our legs our commitment to the manager's ideas, as one person put it. When you look at how United move around the pitch and deal with transitions bodies-wise, you see how committed we are, usually, by comparison. That is a massive part of what's made us so good. And we'll come back to that. I love Arteta. And if you watch this channel, you know I do. We will win major silverware under this manager. I would bet my channel, I would bet the house that I don't own on it. I don't think there's much he gets wrong, but watching us crash out of Europe on Wednesday night and watching that performance against Villa at the weekend, two very clear areas of development have come to mind. And in the late stages against Bayern Munich, there were two moments that perfectly encapsulate those two ideas. The first is pretty simple. 90 plus four, Saka wins a free kick in a brilliant position and he takes it quickly. Maybe it was the right thing to do, maybe it wasn't. It's not really the point. My point is, where did your thoughts go in that moment when the referee blew his whistle. For me, I just thought we might cross it in. In that moment, I missed that superstar. I missed that player who whistle goes and you go, yep, give him the ball. Someone who relishes that pressure, enjoys it. And Arsenal, for all their brilliant play, the incredible underlying metrics, the tactical tweaks, the brilliant coaching, need that player or two to arrive or develop or both. An Mbappe, a Harry Kane, a KDB goes 90 plus four in a quarter final. This is my moment. And if we had that play in our squad, I bet Saka wouldn't have even thought about taking it quickly. Because regardless of White's position, you'd be taking that opportunity away from that guy. And that's where your thoughts would go. We need that player in our front line. That bit of arrogance, that moments player. We've spoken about this. We went over it in the last video. I don't want to overdo it. So if you want more in-depth analysis of this and why I think it's happened, go check that out. But really, we all know it. I'm not saying anything new. And I think Arteta knows it. His messaging has changed recently, especially around the Champions League. I've never seen him so individual focused. To get over lines in the Premier League, but specifically in the Champions League, look around at those other quarterfinals. You need big moments and big players. I do, contrary to some people's beliefs, criticize Arteta. But the problem is, every time I do, he usually solves the problem emphatically or in a way I didn't expect. So I don't say all this with much frustration, more resignation, because these players aren't easy to find. Even still, I'm pretty sure this will be addressed in the summer, either by how we play or in the market. The other moment, and the one I want to focus on a touch more, was just a few seconds later. Saka's lifeless corner. To me, that's a corner from a player that is absolutely cooked, physically and mentally at the end of a tough night. It's a lackluster, weak ball that he doesn't strike through, and it just falls like a wet squib at the first hurdle. And it encapsulated something for me. I think Arsenal are struggling a bit, physically, at the minute. There were so many other moments that exemplified this over the night, particularly down our right-hand side. Saka and Ben White struggling to put the pressure on Dyer with repeat sprints, so Bayern consistently got out down that side, unlike in the first leg. The lack of bodies we were getting forward for some transition moments. The lack of movement outside the block from our midfielders at times, though some of that was tactical, I think. Saka's repeated decisions not to attack the space out wide, and so on. And it was the same against Villa. At the moment, I look at White, Saka, Rice, Erdegaard and Havertz in particular, and I think, are you sharp? I'm not saying they're not fit, but they look at 60, 70% to me. And is that enough? If you watch enough of this channel, you'll know I hate Roy Keane analysis, as I call it, where the actual game just isn't discussed. It's about who wants it more and who's up for the fight, who ran harder. And no, I'm not doing my impression, but you know what I mean. Smash it into somebody. Of course, this isn't the only reason we lost these games, but football isn't a TV show. When you're in the ground, you're reminded it's a visceral sweat, 
blood, bones crashing together, aerobic, physical fight. For the more tactically minded among us, it's almost seen as almost too basic an answer to say that the reason the press wasn't working or the reason the second balls weren't going in our favor it's because the players are tired. But although these things are linked, because for example, the transitional nature of the game and the mental fatigue from trying to break down Bayern's block without using those wide areas didn't help, the physical aspect feels huge to me. I tried to find some running data or repeat sprint data to back this up, but it's all super expensive and I couldn't find any publicly. But just go and watch an individual like Ben White in that last 10 minutes of the game against Bayern, if you can stomach it. This guy is blowing and he might have had to do extra time. Hopefully at the end of the season, we might see some more contextual data about repeat sprints. So why is that? Why are our players gassing out? I posted this at full time on X, slightly in frustration, but I do still back the sentiment. Why does it feel like we always get to the end of the season with only a group of about 13 or 14 players that Arteta really properly trusts? At the minute, it feels like the first 11 plus Tommy, Kivior and Zinchenko maybe making one together and Trossard. We always go into the summer saying this is the season we get that first 16-17, but by the end of the year, it feels like we've always lost three or four players. This year, it appears to be Vieira, Smith Rowe, Nketiah and Reese Nelson who have all lost the trust of the manager. Now, of course, there's context. I am aware they have been injured, Guna Steve 3-4-3. But firstly, as I always say, it seems to be that if they can walk in a straight line, the likes of Saka, White and Erdegaard always play. And according to Transfermarkt, Smith Rowe has been on the bench for, or had minutes in, i.e., been past fit by Arsenal's medical team, which is good enough for me, all but 10 of Arsenal's 46 games so far this season. That's 4,140 minutes available, and he's played 453 of them. That's 13%. Vieira has been past fit for 28, so with 462 minutes, he's played 18% of the available minutes. Reese has been available for every minute, no injuries, but he's been out of the squad sometimes, making it 17% of the minutes with 639. And Eddie, who was playing for England at the beginning of the season, let's not forget, has missed one game with 1,392 minutes, which is 33%. That's 2,946 minutes with the four combined. Arsenal have eight players who played more minutes than that on their own. Now, Mikel is chasing titles. He needs and should use his best players in the most important moments, of course. But part of using your important players is keeping them fresh. Sure, there's injury management issues and a load of things I'm sure I'm not even aware of. But you're telling me there's just no more minutes these guys could have played. What about Ben White and Erdegaard playing the full 90 against Luton while Vieira didn't come off the bench and Tommy replaced Sinchenko? What about Erdegaard and Havertz playing the full 90 against Sheffield United away? Saka playing to 75 minutes against Newcastle when it was 3-0, 70 minutes against Burnley away at 4-0. And these are only the last few weeks. Look, as your squad evolves, as you improve, players fall by the wayside. It's the natural thing. You layer on top, the bottom layers fall off. I do get that. And to be totally honest, I think fitness and bounce games and periodization and red zones are probably my least developed area of football knowledge. But I'm looking at an outcome here. The net result, however you think we got here, is 13 or 14 guys running themselves into the ground at the end of the season, again, and a bench full of players the manager doesn't seem to trust. And a few of those guys were running into the ground are the same guys, like White and Saka, and that will be having a long-term impact. It's just not good management, whatever Arteta thinks of Nketiah, Vieira, Smith Rowe, Reese, etc., and actually a few others, to not use them more when he can. They may not be ideal. We may not be on the same plane as Liverpool and City. There may be mitigating circumstances, but part of management is making the most of what you have. Arteta has, albeit under different circumstances, given contracts out to all of these guys. He's been there five years in December, and if you thought they were bums, they shouldn't be here. I mean, Reese was only last summer. What's the point in giving someone a new contract than 17% of the available minutes? And if you're thinking about that from a contract asset side of things, then I would suggest to look up at the Cronkies. The problem is still there. With more football on the way next season, we have to get better at it because our competitors definitely are when you look at the numbers. We have seven players in our squad, not including youth players or Timber, with sub 1,000 minutes this season. City have two, Oscar Bob and Sergio Gomez. Liverpool have none. We're not on a level playing field with Liverpool or City or Bayern or Madrid in many different ways for many different reasons yet, but this has to be the way forward. And the reason it matters so much is that article. Our legs are a huge part of what make us so good. Our second ball security has been our superpower this season. Without it, without being able to commit to our pressing with the same ferocity when needed, with the mental strain that so much time on the field takes out of you, we lose those extra couple of percentages. And that's all it takes for a game to swing out of your favor. I am frustrated. And I bet you are. 
So I want to come to a few things before we refocus ourselves. We'll come to other issues another time. I know that feeling we all have right now. Wherever you're at in your Arsenal supporting journey, it just feels like we never get it over the line. It is so annoying. But here's the thing. Most teams don't. It's very easy to look at ourselves isolated and say, we didn't, we didn't, we can't, we spent, we haven't. But we don't exist in a vacuum. 99% of football fan bases go home disappointed at the end of the season, trophy-wise. All clubs have money. All clubs have scouting. All clubs have data. All clubs have academies. Getting over the line is a 99th percentile outcome, not a 50-50. So we have to define success accordingly. It also takes teams years to win the Champions League. Look at City, the greatest club team of all time, in my opinion, under Guardiola. I have been critical today, and we can help ourselves more. But we're also playing against the greatest manager in the history of the sport, in my opinion. Clubs owned by countries and clubs potentially, allegedly, not playing by the same rules. So maybe we can ease up on our group of average age 24-year-olds when they don't get that 1% outcome. So the outcome to me is less annoying. The annoying part is it feels like we haven't totally learned our lessons why we don't go over the line. So bits of our recent history are repeating themselves. And it's partly the two things we've spoken about today. But we can fix that with time, investment and learning. So what now? We start watching tennis. The league is still on. We go back to what made us special in the first place. We double down on the manager's ideas, double down on our physical efforts. We double down on everything in that article. We have six games left this season and we can leave everything out there with no split attention now. If we get back in our rhythm, knowing we have full weeks for proper recovery, prep, days off and so on, we can end this season on a high because there's gonna be twists and turns. Our project on and off the field is the envy of the football world. Stick in there, Gunners. Ignore those, especially online, who seem intent on driving us apart because we are on the right road. If you like The Different Knock, you can support us on Patreon monthly or you can buy us a coffee.